Imagine you are in an aeroplane and you have a massive fear of flying. All of a sudden, due to bad weather, turbulence hits the aircraft and there is no other way except sitting with it. You are mid-air cruising through, traveling towards your destination and you just have to go through it unfortunately. Now, physical signs of distress start showing up. You start having palpitations, you start breathing really fast. Basically, you start having a major panic attack. The narcissist is sitting with you, maybe a couple of seats apart. Instead of showing any compassion, they start laughing at you. They start making weird faces. They start mocking and belittling you and you feel it. You feel isolated. You're crying for help. I mean, you may not be saying it overtly, but clearly they know they have to be there for their partner, for their child or whosoever you are to them. Instead, they choose to take pleasure out of that situation. Clearly, they're laughing at you. They are giving you condescending looks as if telling you, look at you, look how pathetic you are. What I'm sharing with you is not something that I just made up. It's a real thing that happened, not to me, to one of my clients one of the survivors of narcissistic that I have been working with for a long time now. You get more traumatized by how the narcissist treats you than the problem itself, than the turbulence itself, because you're shocked to your core by witnessing this cruel behavior of the narcissist, by this isolation and abandonment they give you and the lack of support that you experience. You are left wondering, who am I with? Who is this person? Am I with my enemy or with my partner or my parent? Because how could they do this to me knowing I was struggling and suffering and I needed them in that moment? Let's talk about all of this further in today's episode. Hi, I am Danish, a narcissistic abuse recovery professional. Welcome to this channel. If you are new and have not subscribed already, please subscribe before we begin because your subscription, as I always say, helps spread awareness about narcissistic abuse. Time and again, I have tried to convey a single message and that is the narcissist is a torturer. They torture you when you cannot escape them or the situation. For example, they trap you in a car with them and they start racing knowing you won't be able to leave the car. You beg and plead, you request, slow down, calm down. It's making me anxious. No, they do the opposite. They race even more. They display their reckless driving behavior quite openly and that leads to massive panic attacks but still nothing triggers that empathy in them, that compassion in them. They keep torturing you. They keep taking pleasure out of your pain because that is what they like. They give you massive trauma in these situations which is why I call a car in this context a torture chamber. Whenever they display their reckless driving behavior and they start speeding, they give you hell of a ride, a ride that you remember for the rest of your life. This is how they coerce you into complying, into obeying them. And they take that submission, they force that submission out of you through crazy psychological control like this. And the major driver of that process is the fear they use to put you in a little box. Another example of the similar abandonment and neglect a survivor of narcissistic abuse experiences at the hands of their torturer is when this victim gets diagnosed with a terminal condition, let's say stage four cancer or a condition that needs them to have a lot of people around them or someone to be there for them because they need support. The narcissist will be the first one to run away from the situation and never look back. Why? Because now you can't serve their narcissistic ego. You can't give them that supply. You can't cook clean. You can't earn. You can't be the trophy wife or husband or the child that you once used to be. So you're of no use to them. They run to other people and only show up when they have to project or project an image of being this wonderful partner or parent to the world or when you are getting better and they know they can get more supply out of you. We get to see a similar theme when you travel with them to places that are far away, to places that are foreign to you. I have heard terrible stories, stories that shook me to my core. The narcissist asking their victim 
to get out of the car in the middle of nowhere in a foreign country and then sort it out for themselves. Who does that? And then these people cry ableism, say, oh, you are demonizing a disorder. Hell no, you are demonizing yourself through your actions. Now that we are calling you out, we are showing the world how evil you are because of your actions. You are crying wolf. It doesn't work that way. I've had fear of flying for years and I know how terrible it is up in the air. For many people it may be a normal thing, but for me, I had to prepare for it. I have tried so many therapies. Yes, some of them have worked. I know how to calm myself down, but overall it's not an easy experience. I'm saying this because I can imagine a situation where uh, the aircraft is going through some heavy turbulence and you are traveling with a narcissistic parent or partner, instead of getting support, all you're getting back is abandonment. All you're getting back is those condescending looks. The worst, they're laughing at you. They're making fun out of your condition and they're thinking, oh, look at this weakling. Look at this person who can't even handle this much. And that triggers the already present shame even more. As they watch you holding yourself, tying up your seat belt and holding the seat in front of you and, and doing all those things to make yourself feel safe while uh, the airplane is going through turbulence, they act like they're walk watching a show. Oh, they're thrilled, they're laughing, they're smiling. It's not like they want to turn this situation into, you know, something that takes away the fear, that makes it seem like, oh, it's not a big deal, it's fine, it's, it's okay, don't worry. It's not that the intention is purely evil because later when they talk about the same experience, they clearly show you how weak you are in their eyes and how pathetic that behavior was of yours in the aircraft and how you exaggerated your feelings and you were not feeling any of that, that fear in reality. Basically, they try to gaslight you out of your fear, when, even when you know, oh, it's a real thing, you had this for your entire life. But no, they tell you, oh, you were doing that for attention, weren't you? You were doing that for validation, you wanted everyone to be around you and to cater to your needs and you wanted to be a victim, didn't you? When they say all of this, one, they're showing you how dead they are emotionally and how they don't have any bit or piece of empathy left in them. And they are projecting their own BS onto you because that is who they are. Whenever a narcissist does something in public, something like this, they're not feeling any of it. They are putting up a show. They are giving a performance and they like it. You can tell by their face that they are reacting the way think they think they are supposed to react, but they are not actually feeling anything at all since their emotional body is dead. And for this reason, I call them emotional zombies. It's horrible to travel with a narcissist, especially when the travel is long distance, the location, the destination is far away and you are left alone because the aircraft becomes another form of torture chamber. Yes, they may not be doing anything at all and that is the problem. They're not doing anything at all. They are not helping you. If you have fear of flying, if you get sick, if something goes wrong, you feel so vulnerable because you, on one hand, you have to believe I am with someone, there is someone who can take care of me. But on the other hand, the real experience shows you the opposite. Strangers jump in to help you and the narcissist just stays there, hand-holded, watching how you are falling apart. On top of everything, it's made your fault later. Oh, you are crazy. What were you thinking? What were you expecting of me? There were so many people. What did you want me to do? Hold you like a child? That's pathetic. You're so needy. You're so clingy. And if you have already been manipulated into believing you're the crazy one, you start battering yourself. Oh, I am such a horrible person. I'm such a bad presence. I always have complaints. I'm such a victim. What's wrong with me? You know how the story goes. You know how the rumination goes on. You know how debilitating that shame is, which you should not be feeling in the first place. Have you experienced something like this? Do you have the fear of flying and have you been abused by the narcissist in an aircraft? 
If yes, drop your experiences in the comments below and help other survivors feel connected and less crazy in their journey of recovery and healing after narcissistic abuse. In conclusion, a narcissist will abandon you when you need them the most. They do not care about you. They pretend to care about you and that too for the public show, for the public eyes, but they do not genuinely want to be there for you. They torture you when they can and when nobody is watching and they take pleasure out of your pain. They really feel happy when you're struggling because that makes them feel powerful. I don't know what it is with them and how their brain works. Well, I do know, but I cannot comprehend it. It's incomprehensible for me. So I'll leave it at that. Let's bring this episode to an end. Thank you so much for listening and for tuning in and staying until the very end. I'll talk with you in the next one. Until then, as always, let the healing begin and continue.